the Gospel of Luke. And Jesus went on ahead going up to Jerusalem, and when he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And Jesus answered, I tell you, even if they were silent, the stones would shout out. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you promised to send your Son as King, triumphant and victorious. We praise you for your faithfulness and join our voices with those who acclaimed him with the words, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen.
you, our Savior. We offer ourselves today in praise and thanksgiving for you, the one who saves us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Dan Lee is our husband.
said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord of Christ. You may be seated. Today, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, we're just a few short days from nailing Jesus Christ to the cross and only a week from Jesus' resurrection. During this year's Lenten journey, we have been looking at how we can become better at loving with our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength, as well as loving others as we love ourselves. In the past four weeks, Pastor Kendall has given us ways to love through our words, through service, through quality time, and through giving. So in this final week of our Lenten journey, let us look at how we can add a touch of love to enacting the Jesus Creed. But let us start by reciting the Jesus Creed together. Hear all Israel. 
through them, but there's still something powerful in laying your hand on someone <coughs> who's sick and giving them that positive vibe. So we still reach out for touch of love when we're sick, when we're grieving, when we're dying, and it might be our children. When a child is born, we like to hold them close so that we can show them how much we love them and can show them that that love is comforting. When someone is sick, we look for ways to give them a touch of love, whether it's rubbing their head or their hands or their arms or wherever we see fit in hopes that it might relieve some of that pain. When someone's dying, we lend them a blessing by placing our hands on them with all who are gathered to give them comfort before they die. When people are grieving, we often offer them hugs, an abundance of hugs to show them our love and to hope that we pass on some comfort to them. We are today the hands and the feet of God as we go around sharing our love with everyone we encounter. God is always there with us, even in our toughest times, loving us through everything that we endure. We've heard the footprints home, but I'll share it again with you now. One night, I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene, I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints, other times there were one set of footprints. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could see only one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, you promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I have noticed that during the most trying periods of my life, there have only been one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I needed you most, you have not been there for me? The Lord replied, the times when you have seen only one set of footprints is when I carried it. We know from this poem and from our own experiences that God holds us. He holds out his right hand and is always there for us through others. Just as in Isaiah 41, verse 13 says, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. God is there to help us through each and every one of you sitting out here. We lend our helping hand to another in the form of love, in the form of touch. When someone holds your hand, they're providing a very <coughs> comforting act of love, trying to release some positive energy into some of that negative energy you may be feeling. God is always there to continue to try to remove some of that negative energy in our lives by holding our hand or carrying us through our struggles. When you are falling, you are drowning, or you are experiencing trouble, you are reaching out a hand for a nearby person, hoping they will grab a hold of it and pull you to safety. God is that person who is there to lend that hand. God is the person who sends that person to reach out their hand to us, to pull us to safety. God is that person that's running to us to embrace us when we are in safety or when we're returning from a troubled space. We show a touch of love when we're reunited with friends and family after a period of separation. Just as Esau showed to Jacob in our Genesis reading today, 
then move him to a better area. We all have callings that lead us into different directions, but we all can lend a helping hand to someone who is in pain or is suffering. As we continue to grow in our journey of loving with all our hearts, our mind, our soul, and our strength, and loving others as ourselves, we can remember that sharing a hug, a pat on the back, laying hands on someone, bandaging up a wound, kissing a string, and so many other ways are ways to share a touch of love with others. Sometimes it can be hard to reach out and touch those people because we don't know how they're going to react. But if we don't try, we'll never know. So don't be afraid to step over those social boundaries that we have in today's world of touching people we don't know or not offering that touch of love. But instead, give somebody that you see struggling a pat on the back or a handshake in the act of comfort, in the act of love. So let us 